<clears throat> Let's see what we got here. All right, I think we're live. Hey guys, thanks for. Uh... Let's see what we got. Whoa, here. that's not good. <laughs> Hold on. I think we're live. Hey guys, thanks for. Uh... Let's see what we got. Whoa, here. that's not good. <laughs> Sorry about that. How's the audio? Is everything good? And uh, thanks for uh, Chad Adams and Bud and uh, Trooper and Tom, of course for uh, hanging out with me after the uh, Scotch for Dummy show. It, it was an awesome time and um, really nice to meet uh, John Glazier. That was uh, phenomenal when uh, we were up in New York. And I'm really appreciative of the uh, chance to go uh, and meet with them. And uh, all right, thanks, Chad. And uh, oh, my mom's here. Hey, mom. <laughs> hey, Chris, good to see you, everyone. We're going to... Uh, take a look and I just wanted to give a shout out to the dummies for uh, all the hospitality, uh, especially Bob H and uh, KB. It was a great time. And uh, that John Glazier interview was awesome. We even got to talk with him after the fact. And uh, I got to ask him about Kleinly shit. And I thought it, it was like his favorite uh, bottom end, like his, uh, the base to his song, the foundation, but he actually thinks of it as an extender, uh, the Klein Leash. So um, made me think of it a different way. So uh, I'm really gonna get into uh, some of his recipes and maybe try to even do some of my own, just, uh, you know, on the side. Been playing around with some PX Sherry and uh, some bourbon cast stuff. It's pretty fun, actually. You should try it yourself if you get a chance. Hey Lee, so glad that you uh, stopped by, man. I was I was hoping you had a chance to because I'm going to be taking a look at one of your samples, and I, I apologize for taking so long to get to it. It's been a crazy year. It's a new year. We're going to celebrate with, uh, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this because I did not do my homework. Uh, but if I'm going to take a guess, this is going to be a Bravel. It sounds pretty, you know, by evil, maybe, if, if uh, I'm going to be technical. Uh, 1994, 22-year-old, and the independent bottling that uh, Lee so graciously found, I believe it's called Samaroli. I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly. It sounds Italian. Um, I haven't had a Samaroli before, and uh I'm interested to see what their independent bottling is like, but uh, 45%, that sounds good to me. 22 years, wow. I mean, that's like insanely good. Um, I know it was a little bit more than a couple hundred dollars for Lee, so uh, he was very, very uh, generous with this sample, and uh, we're going to take a really good close look at it and make sure uh, we give it its proper due. And we're not going to add any water to it, just for Lee, at the beginning. <laughs> Poured it out a while back. It's been simmering here in the uh, Glen Karen. In the, in the glass that uh, Lee actually sent me with uh, my, I guess, I'll call it a crest, I guess. It's pretty cool, man. Also, it's funny. I was going to do an old Pulteney 17, and I forgot. I actually already did that whiskey from a, a sample from my friend, uh, Everwin. And... Uh, really really nicely done and i uh, never had a bottle myself and since i knew it was good i thought well i'll go out to petite and grab one one of the last 17s left before they uh, get rid of it and you know they haven't even got the new line at the petite cellars where i usually go in here in maryland yet which uh, i'm not surprised because i've heard maryland actually it's a tough sell for old pulteney i'm not sure why it's a good distillery uh, the 12 didn't impress me a whole, whole lot. The 17 is damn good, and the 21 is, is superb. Now, I did have a chance to try the new, new, the new make at a Whiskey Expo recently in New York. We tried the old Pulteney 15, I believe it was, and the 18, which replaces the 17, 21. And I don't have to tell you, and this, but, but this is not gospel. This is going by first impressions. I enjoyed the 15 more than the 18, just by first impressions, getting in, having a sip. I try to give it, you know, as much intention and uh, proper focus as I can. It's hard to do at a whiskey expo, as you, a lot of you guys are familiar with. Um, but, you know, to get some of these really uh, delicate notes and the finesse of some of these, these um, 
complex whiskeys is just tougher when unless you've got more time in a full bottle to really give it its just dues. But just first impressions, though, the fifteen was no joke. I was uh, it reminded me uh, reminded me a lot of the seventeen that we uh, that I had earlier. Uh, so in place of that. Uh, we're going to do. Oh wow, well, yeah, I like I like that Polar rum that Mom pulled out for Christmas. That was pretty darn good. Is that a twenty-four year old Mom? I think I can't remember. Yeah, it was it was it was insanely good. I have to say. Um, anyway, but other than that, since uh, I wasn't petite, I knew they had a really good sale for this before it was 220 it was it was at that price and i heard people saying oh that's a great price you should have snagged it blah 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 and then it actually came down to 200 again and i'm like ooh and this is a a really nice 24 year old enoch enoch i should say enoch and uh non chill filtered natural color 24 years 46% there's no room to bitch on this one. I think this is pretty solid. It's uh, funny because I really appreciate the non flary packaging, bottling. It's, uh, it's I mean, they, they take the time to put a nice, you know, a nice uh, picture on there, but it's nothing, you know, elaborate. Give you a little bit of a background. I'm not going to look at that to be uh, influenced, but... Uh, it's solid, you know, and that's what I'm really excited to try to take a look at. So, and it is dark. Richie, you are correct. How the hell did you end up with 24 year <laughs> I went to my favorite place here in Maryland, Delhi, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something else. Uh, Bronco asked, did you get that mineral note Swami talked about on the 18? And that was probably, you're probably talking about the old Pulteney. I believe I did. It's funny because usually when I get a note that throws me off that I'm not really into, usually it's either a soapy note or a mineral note. And I have a feeling that it was that 18 mineral note. Um, I, that, would, that wouldn't sound far-fetched at all. And uh, also it just didn't have the, I, I don't think the intensity of the flavor that the, 15 hat but this is just first impressions you know it's hard to give it a you know a um proper review when you're walking around and you're having you know literally 30 different drams so you got to be careful uh oh we got it in the anna uh, 18 uh have not touched it yet have not touched it um the uh but I, I honestly, I can't remember there being like anything uh, off putting, off putting like majorly. But if there was something in that old Pulteney 18, it was probably either a bitter, like a mineral bitter note, or the fact that it just didn't have a whole lot of flavor. Um, but I, all I'm saying is, is that I did enjoy the 15 a lot more. Richie says, Did you ever go to them to little stores to try? Did you do you ever go into little liquor stores that just try to gouge you on rare bottles? I came across that a lot, Kelly. It depends. Uh, thankfully, it's the reverse here in um, in Maryland, where you're lucky to find a, a really good, nice old bottle, and they underprice because they don't know what to have. Um, as far as these rare, so-called rare bottles, the only time I'm really seeing that recently is the. Uh, <laughs> Moose is lying to you guys. Clan Leash is awesome. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the Game of Thrones stuff, it's like, they are decent bottles. Now, I will say the Obanat I like a lot, the Talisker, the Dagavulin, uh, even the Glendolin I thought was pretty good. Uh, those are the ones I've had so far. I do have the Cardu coming and the, um, one more, the Dalwini. Uh, I still am trying to find the Clan Leash and the Royal Lock Nagar. Those are being pains in my side. Um, but it's like they went, uh, there's this auction that Lee was pulling up recently. They were asking like $1,500 for a set. I'm like, that set's barely worth $400, even if that. It was probably worth $375 at Red Release. Uh, just, not, just not right. So. 
Anyway, that's my. I'll get off my soapbox now. Let's get to tasting some whiskey. So I'm, I'm thinking since I got a lot of darkness, I know the Anak is more of a sherry bourbon combination. This um, rival, I think, is going to be probably a little, maybe tougher to dig certain things out maybe but i don't know it, it, it's tough to judge which ones to go with first here so i'm gonna think i'm gonna go with this one and see what we got now likewise it is holding up really nice a real slow drift slow drops coming off there oh wow pleasant right away I think this has got to be a space side. Um, let me take a quick look. Yeah, space side. Just by the nose itself, because the first note I got, along with some confection sugar, was was a lot of good fruit. Kind of like a nice uh, Japanese whiskey in a way. A, a really well done fruit cocktail, not the cheap crap like really good cherries. Pineapple, even some marshmallow going on in there. Grapes, pears. Nice floral, light floral notes. I like that. 45 is right at that level where you're like, mm, 48 would have been really, really nice, but at least it's not 40. I can't complain and wait, you know, that too, too much there. Uh oh, my mom needs a dram. <laughs> well, you got a nice little collection there, mom. You shouldn't have any too hard of a time to find. You should pull out that pecan stuff that you uh, had. That was pretty good too. Hmm. Wow. Ooh, that's nice. That's that's a bit different than what I was expecting. Thankfully, it's not as delicate. I don't mean, I shouldn't say delicate. Maybe as, as um, subtle as Japanese whiskey. It has a little more power to it on the palate. Hmm. Really subtle white pepper. It's a clean taste, really. The fruits are all over the place, same kind of fruits that run in the, the, the nose. Some more vanilla, some... Um, there's not really any darkness going on with this glass. It's more of um pastry, puff pastry. Oh, I can't get over how well balanced the sweetness and the savoriness of the bready sourdough kind of thing is there. Really well done, Lee. This is, uh, I'm taking it that you enjoyed this one. I, I'd be surprised if you didn't, because this is like right in your wheelhouse of, uh, well, it, it, if it was 50%, yeah, I'm sure you would have enjoyed it more. But, Lee, um, I think you would have probably given this, I didn't like, but at least a three and a half to four. If you didn't, I'd be surprised, because it's, uh, I think it's pretty solid. The nose is, is, is really well done, too. Some honey comes through. It does have some drying qualities, but it's not too over the top. Apricots. It's pretty complex. There's a boatload of fruit, as you can tell, all the things I'm spouting off. And there's also some butterscotch in there, some some really light toffee. Not There's nothing dark going on here. No... Uh, brown sugar or molasses, anything like that. It's very light on the uh, taste, but intense flavor. All right, Chad, thanks for stopping by. It is pretty good, I have to say. If you ever see, um, you know, a Bravel, it's it's a tough distillery to find. I, uh, I'm doing this because I'm trying to hit all of the distilleries at some point. And uh, Lee and I have had a journey 
together hitting them all pretty much, uh, with exception of a few here and there that I missed in the first couple rounds that they were doing. But um, the Bravel is uh, is is good, and the Samaroli, I want to say Samaroli. Um, well done on the independent bottling of this too. I mean, I'm sure it helps out as 22 year, uh, 1994, you know, being a uh, old juice. But I have had some Alexander Murray's that were not up to this level, not quite. I think this caliber, pretty. I mean, this, the Glen Keith was, but some of the other ones, the Tormor, not not as not as not as much. This is this is one that um, the only thing I'm going to knock it I think for is the finish is not as long as I want it to be. Really nice taste though in nose. Mm. I mean, it's, it, it stirs around for a little bit. The butterscotch is to me is the, the heaviest note in the finish, which is pleasant. Thankfully, I love butterscotch. The drying qualities of it, it just evaporates so fast after that. Because now, thankfully it's not bitter, but it's not um, it's not as coating it maybe as I, I wish. And I think if it was maybe a little higher ABV, like a Klein Leash, or had that heavy mouth coat, that would bump it up to a closer to like a 4.5, 475, 5 star whiskey. This, I think, is solid, though. I'm going to give it, I think, a 4.25. It's it's well done, and those are the only things that I think I could really, you know, knock it for. I don't want to say knocking it, but I'm sorry, but you can't drink whiskey this whole. By that point, that whiskey might have a, what I think is, you know, it's, to ship it to me so I can <laughs> fix the wrong. Yeah. Sorry, DHS. Uh, that's a, that's something I cannot do, but hopefully you can find it. Uh, Lee, I think said it was a little pricey. I think he said it was around 200, a little above 200. Um, is it worth it? It's right at my level where I'm like, it's 22 years old. Yes, it is well done. It is over a four star barely, but it, man, I don't know. Maybe if it was one seventy five, I think that it would be, you know, right at that sweet spot. Hey, Rabbit and Red, good to see you, man. Hope uh, things are going well for you. Uh oh, <laughs> you can't go to jail. You guys are making my mom laugh. <laughs> That's a, that might be a, a scary thing. <laughs> oh, my. Trouble, trouble. It's enjoyable. Lee, is, are you still around, Lee? I haven't seen you talk in a while. You're probably just uh, either lurking or uh, sleeping because, or maybe still at work. Either one. I'm off tomorrow, so I'm going to partake. <laughs> mm. That's well done, though. That is well done. And I'm going to put this sample away and enjoy that on a special occasion. I'm looking for something um, that caliber, but I don't, you know, need a more than a dram of that because that is good. Very well done, Lee. Thanks again, my friend. And um, we're going to have a little. I finish is still. Hmm. The more I'm having, you know, of course, the more the finishes get better and better. Hmm. I think I'm going to keep it at 4.25, though. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I'd love to see what they have for, like, a middle of the road, you know, 15 year. Come down about a 100, 150 uh, price range. But it's a rare distillery, and it's really hard to find that one. So when you find it, it's kind of like you gotta take what you can get. And I think that's why Lee went ahead and splurged for the uh, two hundred dollar bottle. So uh, you know, you gotta sometimes you just gotta take what you can find. There are some distilleries that I still have to go that are like that that I'm gonna have to put on the back burner and maybe save up for because like uh, Canivia is uh, 
Kennedy, I can't even say it. Um, that one's like that. They got a 23 year old, but they only give you like a one point. No, what's the uh, what's the uh, leader on that? It's like a it's like a half of uh, 750. It's like a 325 milliliter or a 375 milliliter bottle, and they still charge you like a hundred and something dollars for it. It's crazy. Um, I haven't read say any sitting on some uh, glymphitic fire and cane. I like that one. I didn't think I was. I heard um, I've got it back there. I, I heard very little before I attacked that one. And I thought, well, I do like Lymphitic. I, I do like their 12 base, you know, whiskey. Um, I love their Solera 15. So I thought it's worth a try. I mean, I know it sounds kind of like a novelty thing with the whole fire and cane, but I thought, well, what the hell? It's worth a gamble, right? So picked it up the bottle and uh, it wasn't expensive. I can't remember the exact price, but I think it was around 50 bucks or so. Took it home, poured it, and uh, really got into it right away and, and that bottle did not last very long. And I've heard that most people, I would say at least 80 to 90% of the people I've heard that have tried it have liked it. So there you go, you know. I think it's uh, pretty darn good. Talking about mom, with mom about Pete. Uh oh, <laughs> trying to get her to uh, drink anything with Freud is like uh, pulling teeth. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> I brought a, a phenol cask over for, for my stepfather to try, and uh, he liked that one, and the lore, of course, got him a bottle of that. We didn't open that one. That was for him later, and uh, had him try a McCallum Classic Cut, really good, 2017, though. I wish I had the new version so you guys could see what that one's like, but, um, yeah, you got to take what you get sometimes. And uh, had that 22, I'm sorry, 25-year-old Helen Park cast strength uh, CWC that was a, a, a hit, I think, across the board in New York and at the homestead in kentucky over the holidays so uh they still have one left it's a little pricey a little bottle though <laughs> trooper henry's right man the lafroig 15 is the one that's that's the one it's a shame they don't still produce lafroig 15 because if you're gonna get someone in the lafroig and i'm being straight up honest with you don't give them select that select is is not the way to go get the 15. the 15 is is right at that sweet spot where it's got enough peat to be interesting but it's not very peat forward it has a lot of like almost even like sweet cola properties going on it's uh got some floral properties it's, it's really complex it's well rounded and i can't believe i can't find a bottle for myself i've had a couple of samples but um i can't find it anywhere uh it made me it kind of pissed me off because the guy the DC uh, ambassador for Lafroy Kane, Brian, and he brought 15 with him. And I'm like, where the hell did you get that? Because you don't just pop up with that bottle usually. He's like, oh, I just found it at this store in the middle of nowhere on the Pennsylvania, Maryland border. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Why can't I get that lucky? Anyway, so let's go with the next one. The Enoch uh, 24. Wow. Highland. Which to me sometimes is scary because Highlands are usually light, but there's nothing light about that. That is true color. This is a uh, no uh, coloring, natural color, not chill filtered, 46%, 24 year old. And if you don't like the way that looks or something wrong with you, I have to say, um, this is gonna be, uh, I think right in my wheelhouse because not only is it a bourbon, ex-bourbon cask, it's also ex-sherry. So we have a combination going on, and that is pretty much what I look for uh, because if I just have something that's one-dimensional, just all bourbon or even all sherry, it's, just, it, it's good, but it just isn't balanced right for me. So this, I think, is going to be... A, Right in the deal. DHS wants to know if I have a DeLorean so we can go get these old whiskeys. I wish, man. Uh, oh, Lee's back. Lee's having an Isaac Bowman Port Barrel Bourbon. Drink local, baby. It must be a Virginia thing. Is it good? I'm just curious. Uh, if it's Virginia, it's probably decent, but maybe not as good as Kentucky. <laughs> have to see about that one. 
uh, DHS has, has a friend living in the middle of nowhere, and one of the Dakotas, his bourbon collection was absurd. He got anything he wanted just off the shelf. Wow. That's impressive. Uh, Will House asked if I've had a 20 yet. And I have. And the interesting thing to me about the Deanston 20, uh, which is the uh, the PX, I believe it was. No, it's the Oloroso. Sorry. The Deanston 20 Oloroso. I also did my own personal shootout with the Deanston 10 PX. And I have to say, on most nights, I think I would pick the Denston Teen PX only because the 20, even though it was good, it wasn't as sweet as I wanted because the PX had that. It also had some more sulfuric notes that uh, Benevis kind of remind me of. So if I'm in the mood for that, though, and I am on the mood, in the mood for that, like the Glenn Dolan um, from the Game of Thrones has that kind of feature, the Highland Park 12, that matchstick kind of uh, sulfuric thing going on in a real subtle way McCallans do. But uh, that, uh, one second, let me... Uh, Show a, for some reason that masked uh, Jason's uh, post there. Um, that if I'm in the mood, that that Dickinson Twenty uh, Oloroso is nothing to sneeze at. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just if I had to rate the two, I would give the Deanston Twenty Oloroso like a four point. And this is just on my subjective palate, a four point. Five and the uh, the decent ten px I thought was a four point seven five. I mean that there was very little I would change about it. Maybe give it more age, but other than that, I thought it was great tasting stuff. And the price is considerably less uh, because of the age difference. And um, you know, it, it depends on my mood on that one. But more times, I think uh, eight times out of ten, I think I would go for that decent px ten. That's just me. Um, I know you probably think I'm crazy, but I think it's pretty good. Moose is asking what's the ABV. I, I missed what he was asking about on the ABV. I think comments are really flying by. Um, it's amazing how you can mask mad bourbon with poor sherry. Yeah, that's true, too. DHS is right about that one. Uh, is that not comparable to Glen Goyne, or is it like comparing apples to oranges? Let me tell you about that, Most. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Most, uh, as well. Um, let's take a look at this. Now, I've been letting it sit out for quite a long time, at least a half hour. So we're going to give it its, its uh, just due here. Oh, wow. <laughs> I have to say, I do maybe like the nose a little bit better on this one than the Bravel. Just a smidgen. It has similar qualities. It's a, I know it's a Highland versus a Speyside, but it has the fruit. It has a, the refinement because of the age, I'm sure. Huh. This one's got a little more of a dark art going on in the background though than the other one too. And the mouth coat on this, I can tell is gonna be maybe a little thicker, which I'm really excited about because, uh, not that it was thin, it wasn't heavy, it wasn't even close. It was more between thin and, and medium on that uh, Braville. This one is gonna be between medium and heavy, I have a feeling, just, just by looking at the way it flows around, the way it keeps its shape, and the way it, once it builds its shape, it really slowly drops, and we're talking like, you know, a good half inch between each leg. That is something to see. Now this one has more of a brown sugar toffee um, with the fruit on the nose. I'm sure the sherry influence is, is helping in that out a lot. And I don't know, I don't think, let me see if there's any notes on that other one. Um, unfortunately, there's very little notes on the, uh, the ones that, uh, where you have the independent bottlings of rare distilled, uh, you know, rare distilleries. That one, Bravel was sold to Sheevas in 2001. I'm going by what Lee was talking about. 
I pulled up some of his old stuff here. And uh, looks like he was impressed. He gave it a, a four. I was I was right on the nose, pretty much. 4.25 to 4.5. Great stuff. Bottle 101 of 222. Only 222 bottles of that. Wow, man. It was super complex. Very, very nice. I agree. Um, I'm just looking to see if you talked about any of the uh, – if you had any information on the um, – Bourbon versus uh, sherry or any can. Oh, ex bourbon cask, pretty much. I didn't see any sherry notes in there. So um, that one was lacking the sherry that we're going to get in this one. I think that's where we're going to get a lot of our nice darker brown sugar figgy notes. We get some ginger in there too. It has a bite to it. And the funny thing is, the ABV is only 1% different. This is a 46. And uh, the bite is, is more intense. And for it to be a Highland is really surprising to me. But it goes to show, once you put the juice and let it sit in the cask for a lot longer, you're going to get a much more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, just an overall better experience, I think. Uh, Usually, if the, if the core juice is good. The only other anacos I had was a flower, and I wasn't really impressed by the peat choice uh, of that one. To me, it was a little a little young tasty. The cutter, though, I had recently at the expo, I did enjoy the peat there a lot more, and I think it was might have been, even though they're both NASs, uh, maybe it's just a little bit of an older juice. I think it is a little more expensive, which would tell me that it probably spends an extra couple of years in the cask. And it goes to show, you know, if some people like a Lagavulin 8, but I'd rather have the 16. It's just, just, you know, my, my, uh, my taste, uh, don't mind young peats. I mean, the little Freud 10 cast strength is awesome, but if, if you give me the choice between that and if I had an option of like a cast strength 15, I'd probably go for a little bit older. Um, hey, Loch Ness, thanks so much for the, uh, the kudos there. Bronco's asking for the ABV. I think I gave it to you. Uh, 45 on the first one, 46 on this puppy here. Let's go in for a taste. I've been talking too much. <laughs> I didn't even put water on that first one. Damn, I probably should have. Lee probably respects me more because I didn't. <laughs> I've got some more left, so I'm still going to put some water on it. But if if it wrote, you know, if if it gave it anything, which I don't know, it, it didn't have a lot of backbone to it. So I don't know if the water would have really done a whole lot. But even if it did, it might have raised, you know, to a four a four point two five to a four point five. So you got to take that into account. Oh, wow. Damn. Oh, that's good. Wow. See, that, that is what a whiskey should taste like every time. <laughs> wow. Now, when I get a Highland Park full volume and I'm playing around with my PX Sherry, and I'm trying to get that blend just right. This is what I'm shooting for. This is out of the gate, into the glass, perfect. Don't need anything. Don't add anything to it. Don't touch it. Leave it the way it is. That is damn good. And when I have um, something like a, uh, what's a really, really harsh Sherry one, um, I hate to use Holland Park again, but the Dark Origins is really Sherry forward. And if I'm trying to add a little bit of a bourbon, you know, cast to it, I'm shooting for this mix. This is like the perfect balance between bourbon and sherry. That is really what it's all about. I'm trying to think. Now, someone asked me earlier about um, Glen Goyne. It was most. Most asked me about the, um, going back here, most, where'd you go? Give me a second, most. Haven't forgot you, buddy. Um, here we go. Is the Anlock comparable to Glengoin, or is it like comparing apples and oranges? I hate to say it, buddy, but to me, this is apples and oranges because of one main reason. Mouth coat. 
thickness, oiliness. I love it. I need it. I have to have it. Now, this guy has it. Glingoins, even though they're, they taste great, even with the upper age, I mean, I've had a 21. Uh, that's probably the oldest I have. I haven't had a 25 yet, and that's on my to-do list at some point. But, you know, I can't be doing this all day long. <laughs> But the, uh, the 21 and the 18s, I really enjoy the flavor of them. They're very thin to me, though. And I think that's just the characteristic of it. The same thing with a Glen Grant. Um, same thing with a um, – a lot of the – it's surprising. This is a Highland because this tastes like more like a either a space side or um, – I think Glendronic is a, is that a space side, or is that a Highland too? I'd be surprised if it's not a space side. Hold on. I got to find out because I don't have all these memorized like some of you guys do. Sorry. It's a Highland. Wow. I guess some of these Highlands just, you, you can't just go by the profile of um, thin and light on Highlands. Some of the Highlands have the, the, the flavor power, the girth, the, the everything with it like Glenjonic and the Anok uh, can hang with that the uh especially for the price damn I'm, I'm, I'm glad I picked it up because uh it is a bar it is a risk when you go you know that high on the whiskey um but uh, when I heard that 220 was even a low price I thought well hell I gotta give it a try um sorry just going down looking at some uh, more comments here the um the classic that I had was Mark 2017. Uh, well, but might, you might be asking someone else in that one. It's good. I did like it. I reviewed that in the last video. So if you're looking for a, a review on the classic 2017, I did that last one. Um, I have to keep my eye out if I ever run into a 2018. The only thing about the classic cut that I wish it had more of was a bourbon influence to it that balanced it more off of the sherry but if you're looking for a sherry bomb then that's kind of more where you know i would i would go for um i just noticed when um i'm going through my journey i think i'm tending to, to lean more towards the middle between the bourbon sherry unless i'm in the mood for like a fruit cake like an apple or abana then I'm going to go Sherry Bomb or a McAllen um, Edition 2. That was really good. Um, but if not going for that dose 2, then I'm going to go towards the middle and uh, look for more of a bourbon-esque uh, finish you know, to it. I can't get over how well-balanced this is overall and how complex it is. Really well done. I mean, not only are you getting the toffee and the figgy notes, you're also getting some tropical stuff in there. Well balanced. I mean, it's up there with like a Highland Park 25. It's it's that caliber of whiskey. It really is. It's got, and I love the mouth coat on it. It's it's not cleanly heavy, but it's the closest thing you could probably get to that without getting there. That's what I really like about it. Lee, have you had, I'm just curious, Lee, have you had a, um, have you had the, um, an Enoch 24 or something close to this? What'd you think of it? I'm just, I'm really curious. Mom wants me to check about closed captioning my chat. Well, it is closed caption because it's already in print. What's wrong with you? Uh, you can hit closed caption on the replay of the video and it'll actually give you the, um, the uh, CC there as well, so that's that's an option. Either way, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Then I can listen to music and read your nostril. <laughs> well, you can do that after on the replay. You just watch it with the CC on. It, it will print out everything. So there you go. Stephen Connor, good to see you. Good to see you. And I know you sent something recently, and I in, in and I. I'm very, 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 very thankful. Uh, and I know it had a, a, a G and a D in the name, and I cannot wait to see it, and I will review that with you and uh, 
we'll have to uh, say cheers on that one. I I'm looking forward to that. I have never had uh, that uh, version of the distillery, and I'm looking forward to it. I won't I won't give everything away, but uh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> Oh my! Very, very well done. Now the finish on this is better too. So, hmm, it's it's got some marmalade action, orange marmalade. Still, some caramel. The brown sugar still there. Not too overly sweet though, but not no bitter action going on. Hmm. Wow, that's a tough one. It's so damn good. This is a really high one for me. I, I, I can't believe how good it actually is, to be honest with you. Because um, my first introduction to this distillery was a flower. And I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was like, what the hell is this? This is not for me. And I like pee. Uh, the cutter was a step up, though. Thank God I tried that before I, I went here. Um, when I was at the expo, I think I had a couple quick tastes of some of the things that they had to offer, but it's really hard to gauge that when you're going fast. But um, this is definitely worth the uh, sit down, and uh, it's it's definitely worth more. I mean, I'm not gonna go shell out two fifty for a whiskey, but they could easily charge two fifty to. 275 even i think for this and uh, not feel bad uh Glendronic does it and it's in the same caliber it's the same quality i'd say um oh did i send that i've been sending whiskey all over the place and i feel I don't know. You, you, I think you wrote me an email steven and said that you did if you didn't it's okay i, I completely understand you could have squeezed another <laughs> That's that's fine. Um, hey, Gawkin, good to see you. Uh, either way, oh, looks like uh, Lee is being censored by the uh, YouTube gods. <laughs> hey, uh, Lee, thanks for stopping by. And uh, Lemon God is is interesting. I'm not sure if it's my band, but there you go. <laughs> Where is, uh, oh yeah, Gawkin, good to see you, man. Happy New Year. And glad you, you got to come by at the, uh, towards the end of the uh, get together. What are you guys drinking? I'm just curious if anything. Oh, thanks, Steven. You don't have to do that. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you, I think you, I think you did. I don't think you sent any like tracking stuff, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll take a look and, uh, and if I don't see it, with you know by a week or two i'll definitely let you know and uh go from there and uh i gotta get something to you man i feel bad because you sent some really good things and uh we'll have to do some salsa deals here somehow i gotta find something maybe hey you, you want some why not <laughs> I, I i don't think you'd be uh you know i don't think you would be um Feeling left uh, shortchanged or anything, that's for sure. Like, I like my chicken. Uh oh. The end. Oh, my. Fun to ride, but no one wants to be caught on one. I'm afraid of where this is going. I think your all's wheels have come off early. <laughs> Got this for two two square two hundred square. Not, uh, was surprised because it was two twenty last week, and someone told me that was even a good deal on it. And I was about to pull the trigger when I went there. They said two hundred. I was like, "Wow, that is spot on, beautiful, twenty four year old stuff." Count me in, and I will make this last because the stuff is 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 considerably noticeably better than uh, a lot 204 24 yeah that's what i'm talking about mm. it's um it, it's it's reminiscent if you took a klein leash gave it a little spice um cinnamon 
brown sugar. Ugh, got infused the fruit into it, aged it. Maybe not as heavy, but close to being as nice of an oily mouth coat, I think, than the took annihilation. And I will respect what they did with this. And I am on board. I, I, I'm kind of nervous to try some of their younger stuff because I started out with, with one of their all-time best, I'm sure, especially for the price point. Um, DHS is honestly assume 300 plus for, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm surprised that they're not doing this for like, you know, 250, 275. I think it definitely would, would, would be well warranted, you know, for that. Don't, uh, if you're listening, uh, I forgot a uh, Tybev or who does, uh, Enoch, but, uh, if you're listening to this, please don't, uh, change your pricing. <laughs> and, um, Jason just said, uh, 24 is probably one of their best for sure, but I only hear good things about the 12. Okay. Well, I'm going to definitely take take that into uh, my maybe one of my next uh, bottles. If uh, once I, I mean, I need to get an Eberfeldy. I need to get an Aaron. I need to get some of the distilleries I don't have yet. But um, if I ever do come back around to Anak, I'm going to definitely take a look at some of the um, really nice, hopefully entry level above the NAS crowd, excuse me, and go for like a, a, a solid 12 and see what we get. Cause I tell you what, this is, uh, this is hard to find something to, to change about it. I, I, I'm really having a, a tough time finding a flaw. Mm. It's really tough. Really, really tough. Easy 4.75. I mean, the only thing that could improve it, and this is like this is like pinching pennies to make blood. The only way you can make this any better, I think, is to age it even longer. But I don't even know if that would really I'm sure they have a 30, 32, 40. Uh, I couldn't imagine like, you know. Tasting it, but that's the only thing I could think of that a way of improving because it's pretty damn good where it is. I'm gonna have to pour a little bit more just to try a little water on it. <laughs> Very little though, because man, this stuff is not cheap. Ugh. Very small cork on these Anox. This kind of reminds me of Bunahaven. They have a really short little, almost like a baby-esque cork it just i mean it's okay i'm sure it does its job but it makes me feel like it's leaking something i like corks like on uh like lagavulin's and uh lefroig's a little more where it has a little more of a stoppage feel to it but if it tastes like this and if it remains to taste like this for quite a while then i'm not going to complain so let's have a little drop don't tell me. I think he's already left anyway. <laughs> he's probably already asleep. I can get a lot of 21 for 150 to 180. Then it goes for 275 to 500. Tough juice might be worth the squeeze. Yeah, if you can get 21 year old stuff for 150 to 180, that's. Well. Depends on what it is, because like old Polney should be like 120, 130-ish. It all depends on whose juice it is. But 21, like um, Highland Park, would be higher around that. So, hey, Bronco, thanks for stopping by, my friend. Glad you guys had fun. Hey, give me a thumbs up before you leave if you had fun. I appreciate it. Always good. And we're going to have a, just a drop. I mean, literally a drop. So now we can say, I watered it down or anything. BS. <laughs> Doesn't take the nose away. Brings up more of maybe, a, takes the spice down just a little bit. Maybe brings up more of a creme brulee. Huh. Damn, that's good. In my opinion, you pay for the cast that the whiskey was aged as much as the age. Yeah, DHS, you're right. 
the casks makes a huge difference. That's you're right. Like, and a good example are some of these NAS as you see back here from Ardbeg. The Caldalton, the Ardbog, the Ardbog being a Manzanilla cask. Um, trying to remember. Um, the Kelpie being the Black Sea uh, special Russian cask they had. The grooves being the charred oak cast that they had, so he's 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 dead on right. DHS, uh, good good vision on that one. You you not only pay for the uh, age, but you pay for the cask, and um, those second and third fill cask. Who cares if it's twenty years old? First fills. Oh man, that's right. And that's the thing. I don't. Uh, they don't really say. I don't think. Distilled, matured, bottled in Scotland by the Not Do, and that's another thing I felt to mention. Not Do is the distillery. The Enoch is like their name, kind of like the same thing with Kilcarran and Glengyle. Glengyle is the distillery. Kilcarran is the offering that they named it. I'm not sure why some guys do that. I guess because Not Do does have their own Not Do um, other things that they do that's not named Enoch, but. Um, Either way, man, this is just silly good. I, haven't, I don't think I've ever said that before. It's silly good. <laughs> oh, I just wish they had, um, if there's any, like, uh, other cast stuff information. But I don't see it on there. But uh, or, or, like, second fill versus first fill, like you're talking about. Refill, where is it? Yeah, DHS. I think you're right. It, it, that that's a that's a solid color, man. I mean, but sherry does that to a whiskey, and this does have sherry in it. So don't be fooled because first full bourbon casks even have a nice dark hue to it without that. So I don't know if that has a lot to play on it. Jason says for a young middle aged bottling, yes, once you keep packs 25 or so, no word for what comes in the zone. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, it's uh, it, 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 the sherry also has a lot to do with, I think, the, the way, the reason why this is so damn dark and so beautiful is uh, if this was first filled bourbon, it still would be darker, but it wouldn't be near as dark, I think, as that. But I don't know. It's tough. It's it's all uh, usually more reddish. Um, this has a red uh, a red hue to it. It's uh, hmm. Let's see if I can give you like a white space to white balance to balance this off of. I mean, it's a uh, it's a red hue to it. It's pretty reddish. Reddish brown, I would consider it amber at least, but on the reddish tinge, that's a that's a tough one. But yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, sherry's do tend to have more of a um, a red hue. DHS is he has a muse, which has some multiple fill sherry casts that were old, not close to that color, huh? That takes first fill sherry. But it isn't all for us, so yeah. Compass box muse. I need to try that one. That's a, that's a green, I believe, though. Greens kind of have been hit and miss with me a lot. So I try to, I try to, you know, stay away from greens unless I'm really intrigued enough. And the hedonism by Compass box was good, but that's just not my type of uh, whiskey. And I probably would have, you know, rated it lower than. Most people would just because I'm not a green guy. Mom asks, uh, how much influence do the notes from the distiller impress you guys' interpretation of the smell? Uh, Mom, I'd have to say I don't really pay a lot of attention to what they have because this is such a subjective hobby that if I had a, if, you know, if I invited DHS, Jason, Coates, uh, everyone, if he was still around, Trader, <laughs> uh, Bronco, and, uh, you know, uh, let's say we had six people in here and I poured this for them. Yeah, all of them would pick out the bourbon and the sherry 
they could you know detect the age of it uh, we all might agree that there's spice and fruit and um, you know a certain degree of the mouth coat but once you get into which fruits you're getting versus which type of toffee versus uh, butterscotch versus um, figgy stuff versus uh, brown sugar versus molasses. Oh, once you get into that degree of, of the differential, it, it's so it, that's when it starts to spread out to the point where it doesn't really, you can't really, I wouldn't write that down and say this is what it is. Uh, just as a, just as an example, this one says uh, the color is vintage amber. Now, I didn't use the word amber, uh, but this to me is a little darker than the vintage amber. I, you know, that's just that's just me. If I'm going to describe something, they say the nose is densely sweet and spicy with cozy embrace of Christmas cake. Now that's a real, really well done sum summation of everything. If I you know, take all the things I nitpicked and I put it all together in one big thing. Uh, rich yet crisp with notes of vanilla, set toffee, and lemon juice. Now, I didn't get a lot of citrusy notes from it. So that's something I might have missed. I did get fruit. But my fruit that I detected was more of in the mid-range of like your um, apricot, strawberries, uh, jammy kind of fruits. Uh, taste spiciness continues with hints of candied orange slices, warm honey, and warm leather filling the mouth with a symphony of maturity. <laughs> now, that is something else. Now, I did talk about the spiciness, I did talk about the orange. I, I talked about marmalade, I got more of a pithy uh, piece of it, which did, but didn't turn me off. You know, I'm not a fan of marmalade if I ate it. Uh, the hints I got off the whiskey was well done on the balance. Um, the worn leather, uh, um, I mean, I did, you know, maturity is, is kind of something you just, you know, can get from the age. But the leather I didn't really talk about. I didn't really get a leathery. It doesn't have a spring bank dankness to it to me. But I'm used to drinking more danky, funky whiskeys like a spring bank. That's going to give it even more of a Dunnage Warehouse kind of feel. That I didn't really get from this. Uh, thinking about it now, I would say, you know what? It is on the, it is there, but it's on a very extremely subtle level versus like a Springbank 10 even. Not even talking about the 15 or the higher age stuff, uh, which has still got that real intense leather going on. So that's not really a characteristic I would use for it, but... It's subtle, you know, on there. So, no, I don't really take account to what they pick out because what I just talked about, what they put on there, the five, six people, you know, that I invited over, they probably would, some of it would get maybe half of that, and then they would have their own interpretation of all the other goodness they got over it, too, I'd say. That's just my uh, take. And sorry to go off on a long tangent there, but uh, that gives it to you. Yeah, that crappy corn and rye. Who drank Pappy? <laughs> oh, no, they're talking about Pappy. Uh, overrated. And, uh, yeah. Oh, peace out, Wheelhouse. Thanks for stopping by. As long as you did, I appreciate it. It is getting to be that time. But, uh, yeah, the uh, I, I would say, though, if, if you want to take a chance on a new uh, distillery and if you haven't tried an Enoch yet, I would get on board. This is this is a uh, really good stuff. In uh, I trust Jason Coates. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Um, I would pick up a twelve, uh, maybe something between the twelve and four twenty four if you can afford it, and take a gamble because uh, I have a feeling it's going to be damn good. Uh, stick with the age statements. Not to say their NASs are all bad, but I have had some NASs that just aren't. Up to snuff, and it's not just an Enoch issue, it's a Highland Park issue. It's you know, pick take your distillery minus the art bag. I can't talk bad about art bag, but um, you know, um, 
It's hard. I mean, the the select by Lafroig was one I was kind of like, eh, but it's more of an entry level to to Scotch drinkers, period. But um, but some of these I would just stick with an age statement. To, to, if you're trying a new distillery, get your foot in the door with that, and that's where you make your opinion. If it's twelve to fifteen, and it's not what you're looking for, the distillery is probably just not in your wheelhouse, and I would move from there. If um, if you get you know. If you can't get that level, if you can only afford like a double cask or some sort of uh, uh, NAS, like a navigator from Old Pulteney, then that's fine. You know, Let's go with that and see what you think. And if it is even some, somewhat something that you think you might even like even more, if you went for the 12, save up and go for the 12, and uh, I think you'll be uh, happy. Well, thanks so much, guys, for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, DHS is right. Uh, HP gave us the Valkyrie, so their NS can work. Yes, uh, there's some NASs just you know, I don't know, just don't do it for me. Some do. It's a it's a crapshoot. It's it's shooting blind. I'm just saying, if you're gonna buy, invest in a distillery, and they have a 12 year old, go for the 12. You, I think, will be happier with your choice. Than you would be if you just shot in the dark on the NES and you get disappointed. And I have done that before. So DHS repeating in case you missed uh, with Muse. If you like vanilla and light sherry, it's a must try. Okay. Well, I'll try that, man. It sounds good to me. Um, that Those flavors are in my wheelhouse, at least. Um, I think Tom R. Uh, I'm not sure if he stuck around at all. I know he's at the beginning. I think Tom R maybe had a bottle that I'll have to ask him what he thought overall. And uh, thanks, Mom, for stopping by. Dave, good too. Steven, Loch Ness, all the regulars. And hope to see you guys uh, soon. And if I can do a show on a Tuesday, I will. If I can't, then definitely Thursday we'll, we'll be here again. And uh, I've got a couple uh, interesting uh, ideas up my sleeve for a couple of more bottles. And uh, – Hope you guys uh, had a good new year. If you want a uh, trade, yeah, definitely DHS. Send me an email at telex. It's T E L E X at outlook.com. Tango Echo Lima Echo X ray at outlook.com. And uh, yeah, it would be cool to trade a little salsa. Slancha Vlad Moose and Steven, thanks for the great kudos. Thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. See you guys later.